Hey everyone, welcome back to Virtualization Now 2. And a common joke among IT pros is it's always DNS, right? When name resolution goes down, problems can and will happen. In this video, we're going to talk about DNS failover, what it is, why it's important, and not only in production environments, but also for your home lab. And we're going to look at a few interesting designs on how to engineer your DNS resolution so that it's resilient to failure or maintenance windows and allows for failing over to a secondary server for name resolution. So really interesting discussion. I think you're going to like this. Let's get started. Well, first of all, what is DNS failover? Well, it refers to having more than one DNS server or resolver that is listed in your client's network configuration. So if the primary DNS server fails or it isn't reachable any longer by clients, the system will automatically fail over to the secondary server for DNS resolution. Now with a DNS failover setup, it makes sure that your clients and services in your home lab can still resolve your host names to IP addresses. And this can happen even if your main DNS server is offline due to a hardware failure, a power outage, or just routine maintenance on that primary server. Now keep in mind, DNS failover does not load balance, it's strictly failover. So clients won't switch to the secondary server unless the first one fails or is slow to respond. Quite often, I would say in most cases in the home lab, we run internal DNS zones for local services. Examples might include domains like plex.home or nas.home or vm1.lab or cloud.local. With that said, if you only have one internal DNS server that is authoritative for those internal domains, if this one DNS server goes offline, your entire lab environment can become unstable or unreachable. Even if the VMs, the containers, or the Kubernetes pods are running just fine, if DNS goes down, it's like the phone book of a network or the internet as it's been described. Clients or other internal components won't know how to reach those resources that they need to function correctly, including those special internal domain names that you may be running. Now, let's take a look at a few of those configurations to have multiple resolvers in your home lab network. Now, option one, or what I'm calling option one, I think is the most straightforward and probably the most desirable. It's having two local DNS servers. Now, this is the most basic and it has two DNS servers inside of your home lab. With this though, you think about the design and you separate out those DNS servers for best practice across virtual hosts or bare metal hosts, wherever you have those running, such as Proxmox or VMware or whatever the case may be you make sure to spread those across different environments. What are some of the configurations that you might use for this? Well, I know many hate Windows. However, in the corporate world, Windows Server DNS is very common. It's popular for internal DNS zones in the enterprise. And in fact, in my home lab, in the server side of my home lab, I have two Windows Server domain controllers that are running Active Directory and an integrated zone for DNS name resolution. I also have a downstream unbound server for an authoritative answer for a subset of records for a public domain that I own. Active Directory integrated zones are easy to set up and they just work. Could I use something open source for this? Absolutely and there are many great options out there. However, it's just a way for me to keep the skills sharpened with Windows Server technologies, and in this case, DNS in particular, and also with Windows machines that you may be running in a domain join configuration, you get automatic registration of DNS records in a secure way via the secure DNS updates provided with Active Directory. Now, this is a bit hard to find with open source solutions, and certainly not as seamless as Windows Server Active Directory along with DNS server makes it. I run these two Windows Server virtual machines on different virtual hosts and on different storage. So if I have any failures, I'm still going to have one of those domain controllers housing that DNS Active Directory integrated zone. Now on the client LAN side of things, or I would just call this my home network for the family, I run two Pi-hole servers that are synced with Nebula Sync. And I run these on different Docker container hosts 
again, on different virtual environments just to spread those fault domains across multiple sets of hardware. And this works exceptionally well. Pi-hole is phenomenal. It's a really great solution. And I find that this dual server setup with the Nebula Sync synchronization works perfectly. So I have that for my client side traffic, I would say, and then the Windows Server domain controllers with Active Directory integrated zones for the server side of my home lab. Now there's also another configuration that I'm going to call a hybrid option that we're going to say is a hybrid of this option one. And I've ran this before, and I know of many others that do this as well. And this includes using two Pi-hole servers configured with Keep Alive, which creates a virtual IP address. So what's, once that virtual IP address is created or that VIP, you will designate one of your servers as the primary for that VIP and the other server as a secondary. So the primary will always receive the client traffic unless something happens to it or you take it down intentionally for maintenance then Keep Alive will shift that traffic to the secondary node for the VIP. Now, if you're following this workflow in this way, you just have a single IP address that you hand out to clients, either with a manual config or in your DHCP configuration, and they will use that one IP address regardless of which server is primary or which one is secondary. Now the pro to this is that clients don't really have to fail over to anything. This is all done seamlessly in the background with Keep Alive. The downside though is that you will need to provision virtual machines for your Pi Hole nodes, and there's a bit more complexity with adding Keep Alive to the mix, in my opinion. However, I think all in all, this is a relatively low complexity overall. Option two is having one local DNS server and one public DNS server. Now this next option I don't think is quite as desirable, but it still provides some of the resiliency when it comes to basic resolution to the internet. You might choose this if you don't have the hardware or want to have two separate physical servers or virtual machines or Docker containers to run multiple DNS servers. And I think this is a good balance to have one local DNS server and one public resolver. Now, for example, you may have a pie hole or unbound server that is answering a request to your clients at 192.168.1.10. However, you may have a secondary DNS server configured at 9.9.9 or the quad nine address or 1.1.1.1, which is the well-known Cloudflare DNS server address. And below is an example of a Windows host in this configuration with the internal resolver as the primary and the secondary resolver configured to a public DNS server. Now this setup allows you to have local host name resolution via the local server. Remember when we talked about that authoritative DNS server for like a lab domain that you may have running locally, but this falls back or fails over to that external DNS server to allow internet resolution at the very least if your local DNS server goes down. Now keep in mind, again, the resolution of those local resources with that special authoritative domain is going to be down if you have that local server go down. However, if you have a LAN side of your network, as I mentioned earlier, with just like a home network side of things, you're still going to be able to get to internet housed resources, which is a great balance between the two. And it allows your family to be happy while you scramble and panic, wondering why all of your resources in your home lab are down. Now, option three is simply to use public DNS with redundancy. If you don't self-host any DNS servers in your home network, or if you don't house any self-hosted resources that rely on DNS internally, you can still configure redundant public DNS resolvers. As an example of what might be a desirable configuration, I would pick a public resolver for my primary address from one public DNS solution. And then I want to choose a totally different address from a second public DNS resolver. So you might mix and match Cloudflare with Google or Google with Quad9. Any of those things would work. Some routers and DHCP servers also allow you to list even multiple DNS servers in addition to just two. So you could configure three, four or even more DNS servers. So keep that in mind, depending on which solution or hardware appliance that you're using as a firewall or virtual appliance, you may have more options there. Now, what about configuring DHCP for this? Well, keep in mind, you need 
need to configure your DHCP scope to have both IP addresses of your internal servers configured in the DHCP scope options. Why is that? Well, this way there is no special configuration that you need to do on the client side. So you're not going to have to go to every client, configure the primary and the secondary address. That's automatically going to be done. As soon as the clients pull an IP address from that DHCP scope, they will be configured with the DNS addresses that are configured in that DHCP scope. So failover is just simply built in to your DHCP scope. So what DNS solution are you using in the home lab? Are you using the same thing that you're using in a production network? Or are you using maybe a hybrid mix of technologies? Is DNS failover something that you're looking to implement in the future? Well, hopefully this discussion will spark a project in your home lab in the upcoming months. Well, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please do hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate your support and all of the comments, all of the views for the videos really means a lot. And also visit the VHC forums for help with any challenges that you may be having in the home lab, or if you just have something that you simply want to share with the community. Well, stay safe out there, keep on home labbing, and I will see you in the next video.